Hello, 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 and welcome to a very special Keen Software House live stream. I'm joined today by none other than Marek Rossa. Marek, how are you doing tonight? Hello, Jill, and hello, everyone. And uh, I mean, we've got a lot to go over tonight, and <laughs> it's um, another kind of momentous moment here to be here on another anniversary of the game. Eight years! I mean, what a what a ride, right, Marek? And we're approaching the, the decade mark quicker and quicker. Can you guys hear Marek okay today? I know sometimes we have some issues with the mic there. Can you guys hear Marek? Let's see. <laughs> Good to see so many people in the chat. So, I mean, just to kind of highlight some of the things we're going to be going over today, we are going to be getting a little bit nostalgic and uh, going over some of the past and some of the best moments from uh, Space Engineers history. And also we'll be kind of uh, revealing something, uh, some kind of fun, and it's related to classic Space Engineers, but with a, a modern twist on it. So we're we'll getting onto that in a bit. Um, also, we're going to be announcing the, the winners of the War Production Screenshot Competition that's been running for the last month or so. And uh, got a couple more surprises along the way. And because so many people are asking already, yes, there will be some teasers for the next update. And I can't wait to see your reaction. We've got some really, really nice uh, teasers prepared for you. And we'll just kind of give a general update on the status of, of uh, Space Engineers and what's going on. So definitely plenty planned for tonight. Um, and I know Marek is also like uh, really hyped to, to show some of this stuff off. So um, how's it been recently in general, Marek? How's, how's Space Engineers development been going like right now before we jump into the past? Yeah, very good. Uh, I'm spending some time uh, developing space engineers, so uh, like back to the roots. And uh, everyone in the team is hyped, and uh, the team is getting more and more, more professional every day. So I'm really happy. And there is so much, or so many things that we want to do, like you know, in next months and also in next years. That yeah, everything is very good. Fantastic, and. Uh... <laughs> Already, I'm seeing so many uh, comments about want, wanting to know, wanting to see the teasers. <laughs> so we'll get there. <laughs> um, so, Marek, now it's been eight years, and um, c could you sum up this? Uh, do, you, do you think you could sum up this uh, this journey in one or two or three words? Just like one word to just say, like. Boom, this was it. This is, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard, I imagine, but if there was one word that comes to mind. <laughs> well, that's a good question. Uh, well, it's, it's not just a word, maybe it will be a sentence, but I would say like some kind of progressive realization of the original vision. That's great. And I mean, again, from the very beginning, um, you know, you guys had a, had a plan uh, for the game and at the same time, it's it's kind of grown so massive, and it's it's just kept going and going and going, and the community's kept growing, 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 and the community has also been building and uh, you know modding so much great stuff. So it's it's been a it's been an awesome awesome journey, and uh, I mean even the team has grown so great now as well. Like we you know I think you can maybe kind of give an insight for people who don't know the history of like how did the how did the space engineers team start out like who. Who was like the OG and how big was it? And where were you guys developing from? <laughs> so the OGs were uh, Petr Minařík, uh, Andrej Petržilka, Tomáš Rampas. And then uh, for some time we were also joined by a few other people like Rastko or Vašek or... And uh, George, you know, the PR manager. Of course. And a few other people. And But the, I would say like the OG group was... <laughs> What was our, I guess, if I'm counting right, four people, and uh, we were kind of like the survivors of the era before that when we were working on uh, minor wars, and I actually liked that time when we were just so small and uh, 
we could focus on every little detail or actually I could even focus on every little detail myself, you know, because there wasn't so many people and so many di directions. So that was a really good time. And what is also interesting is that this idea about space engineers that, uh, you know, like you can build from blocks like in like in Lego, there's some, somewhat uh, realistic physics and destruction and everything. So this idea was in my head for years, but somehow I was maybe before we finally tackled it down. I was maybe somehow distracted by voxels and kind of like trying to, you know, like do it all with voxels and not with blocks as we have them in SU. And, uh, but eventually when we started, when we finished Minor Wars and then we started working on, you know, the next thing, uh, we came back to this idea that probably it shouldn't be just about voxels, you know, it should be also about blocks, putting them together with some physics and so on. And uh, we quickly got rid of kind of like some of the directions that just didn't make sense. And we stuck with this one. And also we were always uh, upholding the credo of, uh, you know, uh, reality is the best game designer. So basically whenever we did know or we were not sure what to do, we kind of think like, okay, so we should do it how it would work in a real you know like uh, space engineering or if this was uh 20 or 50 years or 100 years in the future you know like how likely is this technology going to be solved how are people probably going to to do ships and so on and also i still like the idea with uh building uh ships in some kind of grid-based uh, uh system with modular blocks where it's in, in some way maybe will happen like that in the future and maybe there will be some kind of democratization of you know space travel so that you would be able to build any kind of ship that you want without necessarily needing to to uh, like build it you know as a one monolithic thing but to build it as a modular thing from multiple blocks and then it's up to you what kind of ship you will make so we are putting all these ideas together and then when uh, actually a big kind of like challenge for us was that we're not sure if we'll be able to do the physics you know like if it is even possible to do it to, to do physics that is stable and i know now that people will say like yeah there is still clang and everything but you know like uh clang after, never dies <laughs> but but still i think it's it's still pretty surprising that something like space engineers was possible you know back in those days and uh the physics engine can actually support something like that and uh, so when we did this uh, when I saw first prototypes where you can actually build from blocks and walk there and then you know next prototype was this there that you can actually fly with a small ship next prototype was there for example there was the deformation you know and destruction and all these things it was a big deal yeah. of course you know this yeah. is one of the uh, yeah. kind of highlights and and in, in those moments, actually, I was like 100% surprised, uh, not surprised, uh, convinced, 100% convinced, 100% uh, sure that this will be like successful project, you know, that we don't need to worry anymore, you know, that kind of thing. It's been a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that's that. And I think we are still continuing in this vision of over all these years and I plan to do so in the next couple of years and because there is still many more things that we can do in space engineers definitely I mean I just uh even now as, as you're talking about this I'm, I'm just thinking back to it feels like a long time ago now but at the same time for just yesterday I just remember yeah like really first seeing space engineers and I remember just almost feeling like just so excited when I saw it because for me it really was a dream like ever since I was a kid I'd always dreamed of being able to build my own spaceship in a game and there was plenty of games out there where you were in space sci-fi games but like I'd always been sketching some you know some spaceships so I just remember like those especially I mean there's the, the kind of the hype and the excitement has, has continued for years it's why I'm still playing and streaming the game so much but I never forget that feeling when I first watched that trailer it was it was awesome and i, I imagine um you know being on behind on the other side of that like when you were developing this and you were starting to see 
all of these things come together. That must have been so satisfying and so amazing to just see all these pieces come together with the destruction and the, the grid building and the voxel deformation. Like amazing, amazing stuff. I'm curious here in the chat. Um, let's. Start, I'm curious. When did you guys get into Space Engineers? How long have we been playing? Like give me either a year or if you can give me a month. Like, you know, March 2015 or something. Do we have any OG 2013 peeps in the chat? I'm curious. See, we got some new people as well, Mark. We got some 2020 people as well. So some people have found the game more recently, which is great. I mean, the game continues. We continue to get more and more players. And uh, the player base has been really great. Like you, you often see it with some games that they kind of peak and they kind of uh, go down. And obviously we've had like uh, ups and downs throughout it, but it's amazing that after eight years, we have such a strong community and such a strong player base. Wow, mm -hmm. look at that. <laughs> You've seen the numbers in the chat, Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got a whole range of people, but we got some OGs. We got an Xbox OG as well. Nice, nice, fantastic. That's so awesome. And I also want to ask you guys, but I, I feel like I'll get to in a bit because I feel like uh, there'll be uh, so much to read. I want to ask you, like, each one of you, wh what is your, like, your best memory in Space Engineers ever? Like, if there's, like, one defining memory when you did, like, I don't know, you, um, maybe even you built your first ship or you crashed your first ship or or something, maybe. I think for me, one of the ones was definitely when I first built a ship in early survival and there was no conveyors, there was no uh, of this automation. It was just, like, grabbing stuff with your hand and welding it. And we had this ship. It was kind of around the same size as the red ship, and it took us, like, a week to build. And we, I was up to, like, 5 a.m. welding this thing just with, like, hand welders. So, um, yeah, this is one of my, like, kind of fond memories just because it was so satisfying when we finally finished that ship. It was called the... I think it was called the XNS Challenger, actually. I even remember the name of it. <laughs> 188 of those. We got first mech. I'm trying to I'm trying to pull out a couple of the best memories here. First time I crashed Big Blue into an asteroid. That was the best. Um, crashing on the moon and still being strapped into my chair, tumbling over the ground. Had to use the F key to release myself. Uh, best memory, getting to the front page of the workshop for the first time. Felt really nice seeing other people. People like something I built. Yeah, there's definitely like... It's a good feeling when your when your work when your creation gets uh, you get gets noticed and other people you know leaving comments and stuff like that. Yeah, there's some. I feel like some of these some of these memories, Marek, would be good to like I don't know capture and then put in some uh, like a word cloud or you know like some kind of display some of these memories because some of those are awesome, you know. Because mm -hmm. uh, pull out a couple more here. Uh, we're well, going. While going back to Earth full speed, crashing randomly on an asteroid I didn't see. Yeah, I'm sure... I think some of my also good memories are probably some accidents, which you kind of were able to laugh off in the end, you know. <laughs> uh, finding uranium was definitely big. First time finding uranium. Wow. Being front page in the workshop. There we go. Oh, yeah. Do you remember this? Uh, Ritty says, my space tether video going, getting big. I think you might remember that, Marek. There was this, it was one of the first ever like space elevator videos. And it was like huge. And it was like a, a YouTube video cinematic. I mean, you, you've probably seen a couple over that uh, over the years, but um, there was one by Ritty that I remember like many years ago. So it's, it's good. Yeah. And wow. Was it the video where he made some kind of like time lapse or just like sped up video, you know, just climbing up for. That's a good hours. question. We can ask Ritty. Which does it? Does yours have time lapse in Ritty? Because I don't remember exactly. I remember the characters because I think Ritty's had mods on as well. I think there was a bunch of mods inside. If my memory serves me correctly. I think that I I saw a video where somebody actually left Space Engineers running for the night with the W key, you know, kind of like pressed and uh, recording the whole thing and then of course you know like editing the video so that just showing every x it was exactly that it was exactly that he, he says here, it was before planets and i had to stitch together footage to fake it yeah i have some time lapse so do you think that sounds about right yeah, yeah it was yeah. like super old and, and, and i think it would be actually good if somebody finds the video and copies it to the chat yeah that's a good idea yeah link it up Ritty. And what I like, if it is this video, is that after, you know, like the character 
climbed, then he kind of like jumped on the moon. <laughs> that was a really nice moment. You know, it was like, okay, it's done. Like after ten hours of climbing, but I'm. That also reminded me of one where there was someone built a ladder to the moon, didn't they? They built like a ladder to the moon. It was like going from Earth to the moon, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. that's that... the one. I was oh, that was. About. Oh, okay. That's, that's another one, I think. Yeah. <laughs> This was, yeah, there's, there's been some great, uh, like, when it, I think for sure the team has uh, always really enjoyed, well, lots of content and any, all kinds of content, but I think especially is those engineering ones that really show the game's potential off to the max, right? Like the kind of thing that you can do in Space Engineers, but in no other game. It, it's stuff like this, which, I mean, I remember, um, I have this video here, this Getting Industrious, that we could put up. And I think this was, let me actually get this here. Oh, there's two things I wanna do, because we have got a lot to get through today. So we can, uh, we have to somehow uh, keep control of our nostalgia. But the first one I'm gonna show is for some people who missed it. This was the first ever video footage of Space Engineers to be released online. Let's have a look here. So I'm not sure if you can see this on the stream, Marek, but this was recorded from Marek's phone. And this was titled Surprise, one out of three. And this was the first time that anyone uh, in the, you know, in on the wide web but actually saw Space Engineers. And you can kind of see some of the old uh, style blocks there. And, um, but yeah, a lot of it, a lot of the fundamentals are still there. You still got that destruction, that, that construct, the, the construction and destruction. So um, I actually think this was before me. Like, I don't think I saw this video. I, I think I first saw it when I saw the, the you, know, the, you know, the main trailer, Marek? With the, mm -hmm. uh, I think that was the first time I found it. But um, yeah, did anyone see this um, like for the first time when it was when it first went launch? Because I that that's even beyond me. <laughs> I think he posted this in August, if I'm not mistaken, which was you know two or three months before the release. Yeah, I, I was really happy when we made this video. This was a big game changer for me. Uh, it really looks, like this video really looks how how space engineers should look like you know the colors the lighting the movement and actually there is even the the old uh, construction stages the yeah. uh, folding thing that i think like we should bring back at some point because yeah. Yeah. I also really like those as well. They had more layers underneath, right? Because the idea was that you would be welding up the layers of steel plates on top of one another. And it looks so much more detailed. And it was beautiful. The only reason is I think it came to the decision because back then that they were super performance heavy. But you wonder now that we, you know, this is before we had occlusion culling and, you know, systems are more powerful. So you you kind of wonder if, if now actually it would be more feasible, right? With the technology and the hardware people are using to play these games. And it definitely looks better for sure. Mm -hmm. It was just a, it was a sacrifice, I think, and people would rather have better performance, you know, than this this visual thing. But um, yeah, it's the best of both worlds would be the ideal. I'm just looking here. Uh, I have another video. This is called Secret Surprise Two, <laughs> is named. Dot MP4. This was uh, this was playing it um, on uh, widescreen. This is yeah. I guess I guess in the original office as well here, Marek. <laughs> I haven't actually seen Space Engineers on multi multi monitors. I don't know if you've ever seen it, honestly. So it's kind of cool to see it working uh, back then in you know 2013. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even know why we consider <laughs> it important, to be honest. But maybe because when you see it in a, like really this wide uh, aspect ratio, it looks more cinematic. Yeah, and. And because we also had this feature in the in the engine, it wasn't such a big deal, if I remember correctly. So cool to see this though. <laughs> Wide, yeah. yeah. Happy anniversary to everyone who's coming. Welcome, uh, everyone joining us. So you still have lots of exciting stuff here to, to show today. So just before we move on, I, I want to just bring up, I can't play the sound because the sound is actually going to get us, uh, I think, copyrighted. So let's... Uh, Make sure I don't do that. We're going to play. This is Getting Industrious. And I know this is one of the first videos. I believe it was 2013, maybe 2014. And um, where did it go? I just saw it.
That's so weird. Space engineers. Oh, there it is. Okay. I got it. I've muted the sound, I think. I don't think it's playing the sound. So, this is... Uh, 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 who remembers this one? This is, again, also nearly... <laughs> it's coming to 10 years old, this video. But, again, I know the team left a great comment. It's currently this video you can't find on YouTube because I think YouTube took it down because of the music it was using. Um, but I remember there was a... I think the Space Engineers channel left it and there was like, I think it said the whole team was basically gathered around the PC watch. I'm not sure if you remember this, Marek. The whole team was gathered around the PC watching this video and was just like in awe, in, in complete awe, right? Because it had all this awe <laughs> kind of falling with the artificial gravity into these collecting tubes. So this was some really, really great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, this was maybe the first or one of the first videos where I saw the like somebody, somebody realized the pure pot full potential of space engineers. And I think also just showing, it, it, it shows so much, and it shows drilling through an entire asteroid, which is something that is, again, not possible in many games. I mean, back then, probably no games. Uh, now, I know there are, there are games that have this kind of voxel manipulation, of course. But um, it was, this was awesome to see. Yeah, lots of people remember the video, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I really hope that it gets unblocked because it's it's a part of like you know SE history and it's currently you can't even find it on YouTube. I only have it by accident, honestly. <laughs> Great. And um, I think talking of uh, actually, uh, talking of old older scenarios, I'm actually going to jump in and share one of the first surprises today for you guys in a little bit. Um, let's just finish this. It's nearly finished here. Yeah, it was so cool seeing all this ore falling like it, like rain into this collect uh, this kind of collection uh, segment of the ship of this. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like I, I really think the what surprised me when I saw this video was that we gave two people just the basic tools and they combined it into something like this. You know, so like they took it orders of magnitude further than what we gave them. And when I saw this, you know, that people are doing this, like this level of like taking it, you know, like like away from just the basic space engineers and like really building something like uh, this mining ship. That was, I mean, I somehow knew that it would happen, that people would create these things. But I think this video was the first one where I actually saw it, you know, this large scale, you know, engineering happening, not just like, you know, like making some little sheep and yeah. flying, crashing to asteroid, but something like huge like this, you know, that actually works and is well thought through with every little detail. And yeah, this was also a turning point. Super scaled, in, like this is, the video is called Being Industrious and uh, you yeah. can see why. <laughs> it's awesome. It said that we cannot uh, hear it with music. Yeah, because the music makes it, isn't it? Oh no, there was also that, but it also had its uh, custom sounds on, if you remember, Marek. Yeah, it has yeah. like some, it had some like, at that point, the sound, there wasn't so many sounds in SE. So the, the, edit, the video editor had actually put in loads of these, um, added sounds but it, again with the music it was just it was just perfect so hopefully one day we'll be able to link that up again <laughs> yeah yeah like if there, there was a museum of space engineers this video would belong there for sure <laughs> yeah it's so great and i mean i mean since then I and mean, we've seen this is just one of many i mean there's been some incredible videos and, and creations that have then spawned videos um over the years and i do have i do think that the it's some of the stuff like this has really helped really helped the game kind of get noticed because people were seeing these videos like this and be like whoa like what other game can i do this in i've like and then they, i just have to check this out so they end up you know checking it out getting the game and playing it so it was it was in many ways it was the game um yeah it kind of did great off this of this community videos and uh, creations. So it's always, I think, I think there's a big part of Keen is, is about um, providing the tools and the mechanics and players can experiment and use these 
however they I kind of discover because actually um the point is that even after all these years you might think that uh oh everything can be done everything's been done but still there are new creations or new types of creations being made like every day every week it's 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 amazing honestly so keep it up guys <laughs> keep sending us videos so marik i think should i go ahead and uh jump into the red ship scenario if you know what i mean yes, yes okay great okay here we go then so so right so this I think you guys might recognize this scenario. I hope you recognize this scenario. So here we have the, the red ship platform. I think the number of times I've jumped in here to experiment with some blocks, it's, it's often the experiment kind of platform. We've got the solar panel here. So yeah, it's uh, very familiar. Kind of walk, uh, just a quick look around. And this actually isn't even the original version. I could try and find the original because this even this version has... Uh, like the hangar doors and has the glass because I believe the original version just had like uh, an armor front and the, the, the hangar door section was actually open. So even this is kind of up and the sliding doors as well. So even this is slightly upgraded from the 2013 version. Yeah, Raven. Yeah, some people have spotted what I'm doing. Well, some people have suspected what I might be doing here. So I'm just giving a quick tour of this ship. So you guys, just in case you've forgotten what this one looks like from the inside. Okay, it's very nice. I, Marek, honestly, I, I don't think any ship has had more collisions than this ship. Like, just think how many millions of people have bought Space Engineers, loaded up, like, the first game and jumped into this, jumped in the red ship and just crashed it. <laughs> so, probably a record setter here. Um, there we go. You've never seen it. So, if you, some people have never seen this ship. There it is. Okay. Right, well, let's come out this door. What do we have over here? Now, some of you guys may have seen this video, uh, seen this ship in uh, on the website and maybe in some promotional materials. But this is the the big red. It's actually called the big red V2, but actually at this point I think it's probably V4, V3 or V4. And um, or you could say 2020, 2021 version. And this is a brand new. Uh, updated version of the red ship using all of the blocks that uh, you currently kind of have at your disposal. And this is made by one of our level designers, uh, Miko or Smoky, as you guys may know. And people have been asking for a long time, like, where, where can we get this ship? When, like, when can we, uh, like, take a look, take a walk around? And the answer is today. We're actually going to be uh, publishing this, in th actually, this exact world. There's going to be this exact world where there's the old red ship and the new red ship. And you guys can jump in and uh, experiment and play around with the, uh, the yeah, this, this fantastic new design. And actually, I'm going to just walk around this new design to, uh, to show you just kind of how much uh, new blocks and new potential uh, is in SE, you know, even over the last three or four years. So we have big new hangar doors here. Actually, I'll walk in the side as well, so. Let me just come in. Okay. So immediately after coming in, we have... Oh, I should, I should, I should use this a second. Hold on. I've got my E3 camera here, my uh, Xbox controller for the, uh, you know, you know <laughs> the E3 presentation style. So, um, yeah, like a bunch of, of the new blocks off the left i mean this is bigger the space inside you've you've got more things in here the ladders but it's really really nicely laid out here it's gonna come through i haven't even, i haven't even uh looked around this entire ship yet so there's okay yeah okay we're now going into the center of the ship I'm not even sure if we can look through all this today because it's, it's it's so massive. So I'll try and give a quick run around here. But have you seen? I know Marek, you've seen this this ship, uh, you know, in the materials. But have you seen this the inside of this ship yet? No, not yet. And what are we? What are you? What? How are you feeling about this? The detail. Actually, I'm I'm actually surprised how how good it looks, and uh, 
especially like the you know the, the interior obviously because it almost looks like I know that the... you know like if it was designed or uh, in uh, some kind of like 3d studio max kind of right uh, if it was like a preset model like it wasn't made out of blocks right something like this like i can see you know for example that the armor uh blocks are kind of like giving it away slightly but the all the other blocks uh it really looks like this could have been modeled like custom modeled in some modeling software it's 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 amazingly detailed and i think you know both some of the new blocks but also the uh the arm the armor skins like we have here the uh, i think it's the sci-fi armor skin makes it really uh kind of greeble uh, look more greebled and detailed so let's have a quick carry on up here and maybe i'll leave some of the spaces for you guys to, d to discover when you uh check it out yourselves here. So let me just try and get to the bridge at least i know there's a uh, crew quarters and there's uh okay so this is oh i forgot and actually there's two two in one ships there's actually this amazing um uh, kind of drop ship on the back and the, the original never had that so you can kind of see here the the control station for this uh this small grid drop ship on the back and maybe we'll have a quick look at that in a bit here so yeah, lots of got the hydrogen engines there okay gonna start okay we starboard airlock can i go through the airlock here Okay. Got the reactor, like it's, it's this is yeah, this is beautiful. Um, crew quarters and bridge. Let's have a look at the crew quarters and bridge. And this is actually pretty similar to the original. Actually, the original had kind of two jump drives. Is it no? Is it jump drive? I don't know. It feels similar. This this area feels similar to the original here. Coming through, there's more stuff up top. We've got a uh, a crew quarters. With the uh, clan cola and seat seating areas, vending machines, storage, toilet. So yeah, I mean it's it's actually I only checked out this ship for the first time inside for a, uh, the other day actually, and I was also really uh, <laughs> wondering when we were going to get kind of access to it. It's uh, also worth mentioning that this. Uh, should be there's a good chance you'll see this in a scenario in the future but stay tuned for more on that um and here we are at the bridge here so the bridge with the new um catwalk blocks you have the central kind of command console there we go so the front is still got like a similar uh vibe of all the glass at the very front but it's quite a nice layout now at the bottom you've kind of got this briefing table holographic briefing table a clock there's, there's so many features as well as blocks here that you can see being used to to create such a, a detailed interior and man i mean I, I just think back marek to how happy we were with the blocks you know in 2013 or 2014 it was like wow this is so great and to to imagine we it would have it would get to this point where we could have so much uh, especially decoration as well would have been just uh would have been wild mm -hmm. so what do you guys think so far original never had jump drive very battle star it's a major interior design change wow Trekkers asking rtx when what's it what that's the question that gets asked um Race too frequently, Mary. Do you have any uh, like thoughts on ray tracing and stuff? I know some people would like to see it in SE. Yes, yes. Actually, quite detailed thoughts on this okay. topic. <laughs> I just don't know how what? much should, should I say. <laughs> okay, so, that's fair enough. So, yeah. So maybe I will just say that we are working on some, you know, like big things for Space Engineers Universe, and one of those is also uh, like obviously you know better graphics or better visuals and uh because space engineers has this dynamic environment where you cannot pre-compute lighting and and things and you really need to do everything dynamically so there is like a huge need for uh ray tracing in order to do a uh, global illumination that really looks like yep. so we already have some kind of global illumination actually in the game but uh you know like 
as you are moving, uh, the game renders your surrounding in all like, 360 degrees as some kind of cube, and then we use it for some kind of lighting. And there are a few of these cubes, invisible cubes around you, and, and we use it for some kind of like lighting effect. But it has these disadvantages, obviously, because uh, if there are different light sources and different lighting conditions around you, like one cube cannot solve it properly. You need multiple cubes. But the, the final answer to this actually is is the uh, ray tracing and and some proper global illumination. So uh, what I can say is that uh, we have it in our plans in some kind of like long-term future of space engineers and uh, what it will mean is that uh, it should just look more realistic in all situations because now for example when you you are in the in this interior the lighting is probably okay but sometimes you can see like weird weird uh, uh, reflections for example like I think even now you also saw it because there was some glass and some green uh, you know yeah probably light yeah, source yeah. maybe maybe some lcd or something uh reflecting thing on it and it was probably it shouldn't be there you know no. because maybe it's just part of this cube maybe like from 20 meters before or something like that and so uh right now there can be these artifacts i mean it's still better than not having that kind of global illumination that we have but it's not perfect but so in the future i think there definitely will be like a huge update on this and uh yeah it's a balance, isn't it? It's a balance between because, you know, partly you want the game to look really great and it's, it's satisfying and it can be immersive to have the game great. And, and it's, it's also balancing that with the features and the destruction and the other key things like it's it can't be all one direction. Right. It has to be you have to find that balance of, um, you know, of, of putting time and work into the visuals and time and work into the. Uh, the mechanics and the actual the game itself but no i mean I, i've seen some uh like some mods and and uh kind of plugins that uh add some new graphical features and there's def you can definitely see the potential um there that the game how the game uh could potentially look with uh with some it kind of uh, uh additions in that regard so there we go, guys. That's that's nearly the whole tour, actually. I've nearly gone through the whole thing after all here. So it's, it's super nice. Like a, a great use of space here uh, by Smocky. And you've got a rear hanger as well. Like it's actually a lot more uh, functional. I mean, from above, I don't know how it compares in size. I mean, it's pretty similar, actually. It's a bit wider. Good to compare it. Yeah. Because now it seems actually wider. But okay. Let me count the blocks, Mary. I'll count the blocks here so we can actually mm -hmm. get this mathematically figured out. <laughs> well, it's 27 blocks, or if you, I guess you include the thrusters, 28, 29, so it's probably 29 blocks, but the body's 27 blocks wide. And the new one here, it's a half block, but I guess we'll count. Well, uh, we'll see here. Oh, okay. Is... 29 so mm -hmm. it's i mean plus the connector there it's a it's like it's it's like almost the same size actually which is amazing it's like maybe one or two blocks depending how you count the the actual width but um it's actually kind of amazing now now i think of it it's, it's almost almost identical width but there's so much inside this one like there's so many living spaces and crew quarters and medical rooms and hangars so i think that's another thing that half blocks and some of the blocks that we've added or the half the, the window walls and stuff have allowed for more compact interiors so definitely some of the the blocks over the last couple of years have allowed to build a lot more in the same space so final thing to do is come down here for the bonus which is actually the small grid dropship here which I probably should have released from. Uh, oh wow! Look at this. This is beautiful. And I remember, I remember uh, Smocky also mentioned that there was a, 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 a vehicle supposed to go in here. I mean, this in itself is a is a mini showcase. Like you've got this uh, drop ship that can carry uh, a rover, and this is another big thing I think, Marek, which can be a difference between like then and now is that small grids now have huge so much more potential with the small grid glass small grid doors 
um, the fact that you can build basically small grids like this of interiors is something that, well, we've only had the last couple of years, actually. So, so you've got the seats there. And what do you, what do you think, Marek, seeing this? Like, I'm just curious to see this bigger small ship here with the kind of detailed interior. Because I'm not sure if you've seen this this particular dropship yet. Actually, I, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw this. Okay. Maybe, maybe I wasn't walking inside, but yeah. Well, I think it's showing a direction where we should have uh, just smaller grids, you know, as a default thing. Yeah. And uh, we are already, uh, like, in our team thinking towards this direction because smaller grids would enable, you know, like, much more detailed interiors and everything. So, actually, when I'm seeing this large ship and also the small ship, it's, and I'm comparing it to what we had in Space Engineers eight years ago, it's showing very nice evolution because in the beginning it was really kind of like low poly and like it, but still i was actually happy that space engineers uh, in 2013 didn't look so low poly as it could have you know like right you know like it could have looked like and i don't mean this like in some bad way but it could have looked like minecraft right and uh and and it didn't so uh but what i'm seeing now it actually looks like star citizen basically and in star citizen you have like pre-designed ships and in space engineers you can build them yourself in game in real time so that's pretty good and if in the future we will introduce even smaller grid you know than what we are seeing and give a little thought about all these smaller like parts you know that you can use to build let's say larger blocks and uh, put it together and make good interiors. I think in that time, in that moment, we will have actually ships that, like you could not, you would not be able to recognize if this is, you know, like Starship or like this kind of games where they have designed uh, everything in a, a modeling software versus in Space Engineers. Plus in Space Engineers, you will have all the, you know, like the engineering and the destructability of the thing, so. So I think it, what I'm seeing right now is just making me more confident than that the direction we are thinking about in our team internally is is a good one. Like yeah, I think it's a very good choice. Definitely, yeah. because if you can do this with half meter blocks, then you know, like with even smaller blocks, it would be amazing. Definitely, if it's yeah, and you could. The, the, the level of detail would would be would be yeah it's hard to i mean it's it's you can imagine it but it's also like it would be a whole nother level i think because mm -hmm. already this is yeah they say point five point five and it's it's amazing um and if you could build point two five or i don't know it could be pretty crazy in the in the hands of the of a of a very you know especially i think the smaller you build it can be it can be harder it can also be more potentially more time consuming but i think if there is always an option to have that then it's uh you can I still build that. and and we already discussed this in the team is that uh, when we made some prototypes with smaller blocks let's say like 25 centimeter or 10 centimeter it's kind of more harder for you to aim you know if you are building like really small blocks like you are putting somewhere 10 centimeter of armor then it's kind of tiresome you know to to aim and to to it's just more work basically you know because suddenly you are building a large ship and it's not just like let's say 100 large blocks but it's let's say 10,000 <laughs> yes it suddenly gets squat yeah yeah but uh there is no reason to not have you know like larger blocks or larger pieces or like la larger collection of these smaller blocks as one blueprint or one you know, like multi-block or whatever and in that case you would be able to to build with the same speed basically you know if you don't care about the detail or like for example uh, there will be a seat or cockpit so of course it will it would not be 25 centimeter seat because like you cannot sit there so it would still be you know like normal size cockpit or nor normal size uh, seat but you will still be able to work with these details and and there are also like for example yesterday we had a design meeting where we are discussing some more ideas you know that 
we can get if we start working with smaller blocks. And there are some very interesting prototypes, putting pieces together and, and so on. So I think this is this is really good. Yeah, there's some, there's definitely some great great conversations happening. Uh, when I know, <laughs> I'm sure people in the chat are already kind of oh, uh, getting pretty uh, excited by some of this. So we will definitely look forward to sharing more of you guys. And Marek, to kind of finish this section up here, um, I'm going to do the classic. I'm going to crash this brand new red ship into the blue ship, which is the old blue ship. Um, let's see here. Let's see how it fares. Have I got enough distance here? Not a miss. And I'm going to give you guys the link for this world with the brand new red ship and its drop ship in the chat in just a second here. And actually, I need to send it. To, actually, let me... Let me send it here to uh, Kianata and he can also pretty easier as well for him. There you go. Okay, great. Okay, so three, two, one, go. Let's see. 15. How's the target looking good? 36, 40, 50. Come on, let's split it. One go, 60. Come on. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Just like in the good old days. There it goes. The red ship. Oh, it's actually pretty damaged here. <laughs> the red ship didn't get, didn't escape unscathed, but the blue ship is as the blue ship always ends up. Okay, can you show the damage on the red? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't hold on here. Let me just, uh, well, yes. Where I was walking, I can't walk any longer. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. The war. Yeah, it, it's working properly. It's working very nicely indeed. Fires are burning. Smoke is coming out of some blocks. But for the most part, it's pretty functional. And this design, just like the original, has a kind of a center uh, control in the middle where it's more protected. Like the, the, the bridge of the, the red ship is always a bit exposed there. So this is totally workable. So you can you know go back into the, the, the main section of the hole and uh, fight on from there. Yeah, but I love all this. There's a lot more windows and stuff. So um, it's just such a great feeling to to see this. And I hope you guys really enjoy this. So I think let's do it. In the chat right now, you guys can check out the Big Red V2. I mean, it's called the Big Red V2, but uh, I, still, <laughs> I still think it's probably V4 or V5. I've lost track of how many times. I think there was a... I mean, it might just be three. I think there was like the original... The one we have now and that, but I don't know if you remember Marek if it was uh, updated more than that. Yeah, I think this is V V three because there was the original one that you could see in that uh, in the teaser, for example, that you showed, and probably that version stayed there for for a year or two. Then I think it was Thomas Rampas who yeah, shout out Thomas Rampas, <laughs> yeah, who redesigned it slightly because we had some new blocks and trying to remember like what was the reason maybe like what what did we wanted to add you know that wasn't in the original one because he also made it i think slightly bigger you know with that uh, like going from v1 to v2 i think you might be right actually i think the yeah because the interior well hold on a minute let me well yeah, let's see here really quickly really really quick let me see if i've got the original i think i have the original maybe Maybe, just maybe. I just so I have the problem is my blueprints take ages to load here. Red, red, red. Because we already had the interior wall, right? So, uh, it wasn't the reason. Mm, I don't have it. I, don't, I still have the one I have here is still the one with... Maybe, maybe this. Hold on. Is that glass or is that... No, no, yeah. I've, I've only got the one that's in this world. I don't have the... Basically, the one without glass. I don't have it. But is it, it? I think it is on the workshop, honestly. So, Okay, though, guys. So, It's also, uh, uh, you know, like, I think in the Space Engineering Deluxe, uh, people have access also to this original 2013 version of Space Engineering, like the oldest one, or I would say like the first public release. So anybody who has Deluxe edition or, yeah, can can go and check it out no that's a good point and actually i i considered playing it today on stream but 
Well, I think we did that like last time, so I'd want to do something a little different with the red ship comparison. But for sure, if you guys want to go and play the game as it was in 2013, or I think it might have been a 2014 build, but it's it's pretty much the start. Then uh, yeah, deluxe owners have uh, have access to that that separate game. It doesn't mess with it doesn't mess with your existing SE install. It's a separate install. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely check it out because that that will really show you where the uh, the game is, has come from. And maybe next year, or maybe I'll keep it for the 10th anniversary. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go back and have a look at that on stream again. Got that DVD release. <laughs> Great. So I think it's so easy for us to 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 talk about uh, all these, you know... I mean, there's actually one more thing I want to cover before we move off this nostalgia. And that's, I think, you know, some people brought it back already. And it just comes back to the... You know the days of the weekly update the you know the every week doing something i just wanted to hear from marrick like how it was like where the idea first came from and like how that era of space engineers was obviously it got complicated on and, and at some point it didn't make sense to do that but um for for many years it was kind of one of the defining mo kind of things about the games community at least and people look forward to every week so yeah we'd love to hear your thoughts on that marrick and looking back on that uh so where did the idea for space engineers come from no no like the weekly update idea because some people in the chat were talking oh. about it how you know every week there was a new block a new feature and i think obviously there was lots of new mechanics being added every week here so i just kind of wanted where was the idea to have this because not many games did that back then especially so. Yeah. so so we actually didn't plan it at all uh it was it came out somehow naturally because we released the game and uh, we we saw the interest, you know, we saw that in, let's say, just during the first weekend, people created thousand things and uh, they, they were uploading it on YouTube and, and everywhere. And I think actually we didn't have Steam Workshop in that first release. So we somehow thought that we probably should have Steam uh, Workshop support so it's easier for people to share stuff and, you know, and between each other and share it publicly and so on. So I think the idea came that we just wanted to give them this support as soon as possible. And it somehow came out like a week later after the first release. And then, you know, there was probably some other idea and maybe it was, I think, lending years or something like that, uh, that uh, we thought that, okay, this probably people will need this, you know, because this is useful. Like, for example, you cannot land a small ship on a large ship if you don't have the, like, you know, this landing gears. And so we added it. And then, uh, because again, we were just small team. At the time, there was programmers only, uh, Petr and Andre. And so it was actually very easy to coordinate that kind of, uh, of work. And I think uh, what we were doing is that we release something and then next two days we spent implementing the next idea and the next two days we were just testing it and then Tomáš had a few hours. <laughs> a few <laughs> hours? <laughs> rapid, and, yeah, rapid development cycle. <laughs> so, so and, and it really worked. Of course, like somehow we were somehow accumulating some kind of technical debt somewhere, something like this, but maybe not that much, you know, because those people, they knew the code they knew the project, so kind of like by default, they were doing it the correct way. So I, I don't think there was actually at the time huge technical debt. And uh, then at some point we started to work on uh, like more long-term things, you know, and the first thing was, I cannot remember if it was multiplayer or survival, but I think actually it was survival update because that was the next big thing that we wanted to do. So this is, that was something that we started work in parallel, you know, with these weekly updates. And it took us, let's say, six months or something over six six months to do the survival update. And but we are still doing the weekly updates. Yeah. At that time. Having something and, there for people. Yeah. 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 And I actually really loved it because it was like some kind of TV show, you know. That, uh, <laughs> yeah. Ep every week in a new episode or something like this. Yeah. yeah like now, good. for example, the the new uh, foundation, you know, on HBO. It's like, mm. you know, every week there is a new episode and you want to watch it and, and so on. So. And, uh, you know, like in the old times, this was more common, you know, that there was, for example, X-Files coming every Friday and I was just like counting hours, you know, and my life was... Until... 
you know, like circling around the Friday. So I can watch <laughs> it as far. And so, so, so I think it was this kind of phenomena, and I loved it. It would be perfect if we can get back to that, to those times, because it was really. Now it's kind of like we are planning things and doing it properly, you know, like proper company and so on. But <laughs> proper, <guy. laughs> but it's slightly boring. And those times, like this, was more, more, you know, more fun and more mm, rap rapid prototyping. And also, you know, like you got some idea, you quickly implement it, you test it, you get it out, basically in a matter of days. You know, yeah. not like like months. Rapid iterations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that was those were really good times. Yeah, it would be good if we can uh, go back or try to do it again. You know, somehow maybe in the future. You know, when we will have better technology and things, we'll we will be able to 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 get there again. Yeah, it was. It, I mean, I, I think I was just I was reading some of the. I feel like I really want to after the stream's over. I think I do want to go back and look at the. The chat because there's some great memories people are talking about you know how they were looking forward to this every week and um i mean for me i just always remember racing home and to get onto the forums and i i remember being this you know f5 uh, keyboard warrior around because I, I think it, at some point it was at the same time every week and then later on it was like maybe it was tougher to get out and i just remember at some point it's like just spamming f5 on the page to try, I don't know even why. I don't know, I don't know why I would do that. Just like wait, like you know, and find out. But I was just so hyped to find out, and I think probably racing to say first on the forums, you know, the, the classic first kind of thing. <laughs> so yeah, no, it was just I. It's it's it was some. It was a great time, and I was. It was when honestly I was. It, it really helped me, especially, and I think it helped the community grow to what it was because there was this. There was a, like the, almost a weekly event to get behind. Like some other games, they have some release and it's like here and it's they just kind of release it and they play it. I think with this, like there was this whole community that was on the forums, like speculating, waiting, reviewing every week for this drop to happen. And then the next week would start, okay, what's going to happen next week? And it was, yeah, I, I think it really, really helped early on to to kind of keep the momentum and, and spread the, the good news of space engineers or something like this. <laughs> and I also remember how uh, quickly after our uh, Thursday, uh, you know, trailer, how quickly uh, the community created their videos, you know, like uh, the, yeah. they, on the release. And uh, this was really interesting that uh, I always watch them, uh, these videos, because they found basically different angle on what we did and it was like okay i didn't even realize that we did this you know like or like that you can use it from this angle or like you can do this thing so for me yeah actually one of the big things with space engineers was that not what we created but what community created thanks to us or like using our tools and this kind of basically surprise you know so for me for some time space engineers was basically just like we are creating it so the community can be creating something else and surprising us. And it, it's still true even to this day because just open YouTube, you know, and enter Space Engineers and check out some new videos and there is just so much stuff people are creating and it's all so original that I I, I really cannot believe. Yeah, it's 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 so, it's so true, man. I just think it's... This is the thing I love. To, I, I do this all the time on just any stream. I, always, I love getting nostalgic and, and mechanized... Remind me of something he said. I remember, I remember if the update was late because sometimes I remember you guys had to stay to like nine or ten because there was some issues or whatever. Um, and everyone would start saying, "Oh yeah, they're gonna miss it this week. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, they're gonna miss it." And then it would like it would still come out like ten p.m., eleven p.m. There was like this kind of like not religion, but you know what I mean. Like there was like this. Uh, it like had to come out every Thursday, and I think there was only like a couple of times where it had to come out on Friday or something like that, at least for a long period of time. There was like, you know, only when there was, maybe even it was a steam issue of the building or something, I don't know. But uh, I remember that exact thing mechanized. Yeah. <laughs> we were in a cult. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a weekly update called Patchmas. Yeah. I mean, Dak actually said here, I mean, I, I, it wasn't the case for, luckily it wasn't the case for, you know, uh, everyone because we still we kept going and still great stuff has happened but 
Dak just said like he, he mentioned that he actually did start to drift away from the game after weekly updates. And maybe not intentionally, just because it's not, it wasn't like in his feed or it wasn't in his mind, you know, it wasn't in his mind to check the forum. So I think uh, that I can imagine that happening. And I think that's why, you know, in, in the future, at some point, it would be good to be able to have something like this. Because I think it's, it's, it, it can be good for the, the team to you know, this rapid iteration. And it can also be just great for the community because there is something every day to look forward to. I, yeah, so yeah, definitely. Well, that has been, I think exactly now, we've exactly had an hour of uh, nostalgia here. And I mean, we could easily go on for hours, I think. Um, Marek has I, unlimited stories about uh, the old days and <laughs> development over the years. But uh, as we've got so much to get through today, we are gonna move on. And uh, one, the, the next thing we're going to do, we're actually going to go over, we're going to announce the winners of the War Production screensh uh, Screenshot Contest. And uh, we've got them already here. So hopefully some of the, the, the winners are in the chat tonight. Uh, as I prep this, one of a uh, reminder is that uh, Space Engineers is currently 30% off in the, Halloween in the Halloween sale. So um, yeah, you can, uh, I'm sure we'll get some links in the chat. And I'm just going to double check, but I believe that is also the DLC as well. So yeah, the base game and all DLCs are uh, currently 30% off. Um, yeah, uh, in this uh, Halloween sale. So if you haven't, you're missing some DLCs or been still waiting to get the game for a, a friend, maybe hasn't tried it after eight years, then now could be the perfect time. So yeah, I got it, Chozo. <laughs> Misspoke there. So yeah. That's the just a shout out about the, um, the Halloween sale. Now let us get up the contest results. Okay, Marek, and uh, I'm not sure if you're going to watch the stream for this one or if you if you've got the uh, the the results up separately here. But let's have a look. Okay. Oh, no, that's not good. All right, zoom to fit. There we go. Okay, good. I'm going to bring up. There it is. So, without further ado, we have in the maximum machinery category in third place, we have Robert. Robert. Oh, hello. That didn't work. <laughs> I just pressed something, it didn't work. Hold on a minute, Marek. Why did that not work? That was, um, that was strange. Fail, hold on. Okay. By, by the way, it seems that Olga has joined the stream. Oh, really? Unless impersonator, yeah. <laughs> hello, Olga, in the chat. Yeah, in the chat, because I see Olga Afanasieva and there is a cat picture. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. How, how, how are you doing, Olga? So very anticlimactic, I know. I, I pressed the button and it minimized it. I don't know why. I'm going to have to do this differently. Strange. Okay, uh, let me bring it up like this then. And by the way, for those who don't know, Olga is a COO in Good AI. Okay, we're just gonna have to view it in the photo browser here, which is fine. So, like this, here we go. So yes, in third place, we have Robert with this image here. Here we are. Actually, what I'll do is I'll probably hide me and Marek here for a second so we can get the full experience. So congrats. Congrats to Robert here with a third, uh, a third position. Yeah, congrats. Very nice. So a, a cool looking dropship in the front, some cargo shuttles in the back, a lot of uh, a lot of tanks and the new uh, pipes uh, to the uh, left hand side. So it's awesome stuff. Okay, in second place. Hopefully this is the right order. It's not going to randomize it. Second place, we have Roni or Roni Dude with this super low FOV shot here of this complex 
uh, asteroid base here. And the thing is, honestly, some of these images uh, don't actually do the do the actual photos justice. What I mean by that is that these are ultra resolution. Like some of these are 5K. There was even like a, an 8K or I don't know what I saw in the in the the folder, but there's some seriously high uh, resolution images here. This might be one of them. I can try. Uh, let me try zooming in here. Yeah, this is one of those. And you can actually see engineers walking around inside the hangar here. So sometimes, uh, I don't know, we'll have to figure out a best way to post this online so people can actually view these uh, in full and see some of the, the smaller details inside these shots here. So congratulations to Roni. What do you think of this one, Marek? Yeah, very nice. I like... Um... I, I don't know how to describe this, but you know, these kind of factorial like structures, you know, on the left and right. So, you know, it seems like there is some kind of automation going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't even realize the, the resolution, to be honest. So <laughs> I just remember that when I was opening, uh, when we were doing the voting, and I opened some of the files, they took like a couple of seconds to actually load, you know, so they must have been really huge. Yeah. And uh, so I like this one because it feels like, you know, there is some real space engineering, space engineering going on with some proper automation inside. Like this is what I uh, kind of wanted in space engineers also was that not just people building stuff, but people building stuff or people building machines that build machines. Or that machines do building machines. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so when I see it in space engineers, like for example, the 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 video that we saw with the gravity, you know, mining ship. Yeah. Uh, those were the things like some kind of first way how to automate the mining. You know, not just like manually mining, but building such a ship that automates the process for you, and you can do it with larger scale. So you can do larger scale mining. So. So every time when I see these kind of things in space engineers, I am surprised and satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like for example, recently I saw a video where there are some walking mech robots, and they actually work uh, walk quite well. You know, so not not like like stumbling and 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 so, but like properly walking, and there was some fighting and shooting, so that was nice. By the way, since mentioning the robots, uh, uh. I don't know if you already released this or not, but uh, in Good Air, we're also working on some kind of uh, deep learning controller for mech uh, robots in Space Engineer. So you can build any kind of robot in Space Engineer and like plug this AI controller to it as a block or something, and it will just walk, you know. Yeah, I'm not the, sure. If, I don't know if that's been published yet, actually. I, feel I like... think we published some, some like preliminary version a couple months ago. Okay. And, and now we have actually even better robot because I just realized that we should make some badass looking robot, <laughs> just, some, you know, like, just some basic robot, but we need something really, really bad. And so uh, Miko made a new one. And now the, the programmers in uh, Good AI are training it. And we will be releasing a video where it's actually a funny video because the robot learned to walk, not on his feet, but I would say like on his knees. basically. <laughs> <laughs> and it just looks so weird. But now, <laughs> I already also saw like the recent version, you know, a couple of days yeah. ago. That one is already walking properly. But we also want to release this kind of like knee walking version because it's funny and and cool. So I think that will be. Yeah, I have to, just have to get this out because I don't think the community has seen this fully. Because I, I think Aaron, I think uh, Kianard is saying that this new stuff hasn't been shown yet. So another little teaser there, maybe. <laughs> So yeah, some great stuff, great stuff going on in good AI as well, actually. And uh, I think if we weren't so pressed for time, we could we should def we could definitely go into more of that, even uh, you know on stream. And I think we should when this, I think when we do publish this, uh, sometime after, I think this could be good actually, Marek. We could actually go over on this. Yeah, Keenard is saying spoilers. <laughs> A little teaser there. Yeah, it's all good. That's why that's why Marek Marek is here to tease. So that's good. <laughs> so Roni, yeah, second place here. Great image super detailed and there's there's more to the story once you start zooming in and in first place for maximum machinery we have tim here we go in this uh again very high resolution scene i'll zoom in, in a second here but 
Again, telling a bit of a story here. We have all the pipes. We have the reactor core below there. Some <laughs> engineers are looking into that. And uh, I think if I start zooming in here, like really zooming in and let it load, you'll see that the resolution still, I mean, even this is still like 1080p, even after zooming in 79% here. I don't know what exactly it is. And then obviously the sides is there's some kind of uh, special effects. You can see engineers off the side welding. But this is just the, this, the atmosphere, the lighting in here. It's a very moody, uh, yeah, it's a really, really nice feeling scene here. So yeah, congratulations to Tim for our first position for Maximum Machinery. What are your thoughts on this one, Mark? Uh, it, it's fantastic. And also, I love the story, you know, that the, the picture is telling through all the engineers just like doing something of standing there. And I think it was a very good idea to, to send us the, uh, pictures in this super high resolution, because then you can really be searching for these little stories there. And actually, I will do it after the stream again, like... Yeah, yeah, uh, go through like, it, yeah. Like, like there is this game like searching Valdo or like finding Valdo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've gone blank. Where, where's, yeah, where's Valdo, I think it's... Or where yeah. is Valdo? So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy. And this basically shows like what space engineers should be about. Yeah, and that's what I think this, you know, with this competition, oh, I just notice as well, there's someone at the top yeah, looking down. <laughs> so yeah, fantastic. Big, big congrats to uh, to Tim here for the uh, Max Machinery winner. We'll be contacting all the winners, of course, uh, in the coming days. So that is that category. And I, I think we'll try and find a way to release these that we can also um, let the community zoom in and have a look at some of these. Not all of these are ultra high resolution, but these some of these uh, really are. That's fantastic. So for the next category here, we have the industrial automation category. And let's have a look here what I got. Uh, yeah, that's correct. So in third position of the industrial automation, we have Tyler. Tyler uh, with this fantastic uh, production line shot with these rovers getting built up here by these mechanical arms and the kind of the spotlights and the, the kind of mist. It's a very moody setting here, but um, yeah, really like this one. And again, the low FOV makes it very cinematic as well. There we go. Really yeah. nice. I think this is part of what you were talking about, Marek, is uh, in a way is machines building machines. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this is a high resolution. Let me just zoom in. I, I think this is high resolution. So you can, let me see if it loads. Yeah, I think it is. Not as high, but it's still pretty high. It's still 4K, I think, at least. So uh, there we go. I love this arm here with this kind of like cross section here. It's interesting how they did that using the... Interesting. They go, oh, that's interesting. I see. They've got four wheels and like an antenna in the middle to build this kind of welding arm. That's very nice. So big congrats to Tyler in the third position. In second place for industrial automation, we have... Uh, Stefan, with this image, another image that's telling a bit of a story here. <laughs> I love this. And um, I, again, I feel this one I've got to zoom in because you can see they're doing some kind of, if you zoom in here, they're doing some uh, thruster testing, right? They've got this port here, they're testing the thrusters. But as we look around this room, we see more stuff going on. Here we see some engineers kind of inspecting this big thruster here. We see some guy checking some stats on this uh, little machine. And then if we come over here, we actually see robots on a production line, on a conveyor belt production line, uh, you know, making these, uh, these, these, en these thrusters, these engines here. So just awesome, awesome stuff. <laughs> I'm not sure again, Marek, if you missed these robots in the initial image, maybe. Yeah, I missed, I missed. I really should have zoomed. <laughs> I, I didn't realize this when I was reviewing the, the pictures, but I should have zoomed because there are so many stories inside. Wow, that's so cool. It's really and nice. Oh, well, this one, what I liked was the color scheme, you know, because it has this Lego vibe. It does, it just, yeah. A few basic colors, so. But I completely missed the, all the stories, so so that is really cool that it's there. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, I didn't see, I didn't in, in, even zoom around all of it. There's like a little crane here. 
But yeah, it's uh, it's. Joe, maybe just an idea that when we'll be releasing these uh, entries, maybe we can make a video, and in that video we can be kind of like zooming and you know, and moving around. Yeah, that was my plan actually. Uh, my plan was to release this as a video later on, um, you know, afterwards, like in the, in the coming weeks. So that that can also be great. So stay tuned for that, guys. Mm -hmm. So con yeah, congrats to, to Stefan with the uh, the second place and in first place for industrial automation we have remain now it took a second to load there now just look at this <laughs> so much getting built here and i'm gonna have to zoom in i'm gonna let you guys kind of take it in the image zoomed out for now you've got these nice kind of chrome pipes and chrome tanks no production line but then when i start to zoom in here we can see that there's these super complex robot uh, arms that are building these uh, these rovers, right? And they're actually sticking the... So this one here is putting the side panel onto the side. Um, this one's adding thrusters. So all these arms... I'm, cu I'm curious to know how well this works. I mean, it's got the hinge part. So potentially this could actually be put together in a modular way. Um, but I mean, just the construction arms, the lights, there's just so much detail in this in this shot here i just kind of look around we've got down here there's some um, kind of little there's a train system you've got this rail system and there's these kind of complex um transporting uh magnetic i mean i'm just lost the words here actually <laughs> so much going on and just yeah fantastically detailed so yeah there we go so massive congrats to remain for our first position of industrial automation i hope you guys in the chat agree with our picks as well <laughs> congratulations to everyone yeah very nice there we go all right so down here a second. And, go, on, go, go and, ahead mark give some thoughts yeah. and, and i like the color scheme in this one you know where you have the yellow for the kind of like robotic you know manipulators uh, and the rest is just like basic, you know, black or gray or, you know, those basic colors. And which makes, you know, the this like robotic manipulator parts to to be more contrasted with the, with the rest of the picture. Yeah, they so, stand out for sure, don't they? Yeah. So this one to me actually seems like professional work, you know, not just <laughs> hobby, but this, this whole like picture, the composition, everything looks to me like professional job really good yes. uh, actually all of them were very good and professional and and i just want to also add that obviously we had to pick the top three of each category which means that there were some great screenshots that didn't quite make it and we did we had actually i think there was eight of us voting i think in total there was myself there was marik there was uh Kianata, there was also the lead artist natik as well so we had a professional artist on the line as well to give his his kind of feelings and votes and stuff. So there were, we had a whole kind of voting thing. And, you know, some of it's subjective. And there were some entries that were really close. And then we were like, ah, you know, so it was it was like of any of these competitions. It's really tough because uh, there's so many great entries and we just have to really nail it down to like what is the what really is the best, even just if it's a little bit better, you know, like just kind of just grabs it at the last minute. So, yeah. Big congrats to Remain and everyone so far. And we're going to uh, move on to the third category, which is uh, Vehicles of War. So Vehicles of War in third place, we had... So it's taken a while to load this image. It's a high resolution again. I might not pronounce this properly, but I'm going to try. So in third position, we have uh, Seoul. Uh, S I O U X, CEO, like CEO, <laughs> CEO. <laughs> so, congratulations to CEO for the third position here with this vehicles of war and quite a terrifying looking design here. And I think I'll, I again need to zoom in to get some of the. I think this is looking pretty, yeah, pretty high resolution here. We can zoom in on these fighters over here. They're kind of like miniaturized versions of the bigger ships. They've got this kind of jaw going on. And, uh, yeah, there it is. Jaws of Clang. There we go. 
Yeah, look to the side. Got the, the, the full. It's quite good because it shows the full body of one of these designs in the background. So you can see the overall kind of profile. Then you also get this up close shot as well here. So uh, there we go. What's your feelings there? Uh, what are your uh, feelings on this one, uh, Marek? Very nice. I was surprised, you know, when we have this organic uh, inspired design, you know, like this looks like some Godzilla or something. <laughs> so like, it, every time it surprises me, but I like it. Fantastic. And I'm getting the name. It's oh, Thank you, chat. The hive minor chat. It's pronounced Sue. It's pronounced Sue. Yes, I, I should have. I, should have clicked there, but thank you so much for, for clarifying that. So congratulations to, uh, to Sue with the third position here in the Vehicles of War. Next up in second place, we have Tor with this um, beautiful uh, ship here with lots of greebling. A lot of that is also say thanks to the, the, the choice of armor skins as well as these fantastic kind of solar arrays in the background. So we get these two ships flying past these uh, these space stations with these huge golden solar arrays. I have to, again, we've got to zoom in to... Uh, oh, I need to hide ourselves as well here. There we go. I'll zoom in to see... I, I, yeah, I believe an identical ship flying past these huge uh, space stations here. Heading off to battle, it seems. So there we go. Very nice. I just love all this, all the detailing on it. It's, it's, it's super nice. The planet below. This is the the one in. Um, I've gone blank. Is it Pertam, I think. It looks like I don't know if that's an enemy ship in the distance here. There's another ship from of a slightly different color scheme. So maybe that is an enemy ship that they're approaching there. But it's um, yeah, beautiful ships and. Uh, yeah, really, really nice stuff here. So congrats to uh, Tor, T-O-R there, with our second place vehicles. I'm actually going to go back to the first one just to give you guys the full screen of that one before. There you go, that's the full screen. Well, about us, I mean. What are the stories that we can make about these pictures? Yeah, it's true, actually. Like, you can, you could, you can even make it yourself and just say, like, what the situation is maybe they, maybe there's a, an unknown signal or distress signals is, has appeared and they're sending out two corvettes to in, investigate and stuff so yeah it's, it's definitely fun with that mm -hmm. uh, it's some it's actually true some entries had uh some descriptions attached which i don't have to hand right now and um and actually um some of them gave a brief backstory to the shots which uh, which is always really nice to see to put that to put that effort in there so Congratulations to Tor with the uh, the second place. And with our first place for Vehicles of War, we have Shadow Trace with this awesome uh, hangar scene with this uh, kind of warship getting constructed. And again, we're going to have to zoom in here to see all the detail, but there's a lot going on in this image. So I'll just let you guys take it in for a second here. Pretty nice. Now, when I start to zoom in, immediately mm. my eyes are drawn to this down here. <laughs> so look at this here. This is great. So we've got. Oh, isn't this is from? Um, that's from. Oh, isn't that? Is that what I think it is? I'm pretty sure that's from the um, alien. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, for power loader. There it is. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it. I didn't even notice it at the design in, until now. So there you go, power loader, power lifter. So we've got engineers standing around. We've got pipes. We've got sparks flying from the welding. There's someone working right in front of the rocket launcher. There, There's people standing all around the hangar, on the deck, top of the deck, custom turrets. And actually, you can see here, there's a crane that's actually with a person inside it. There's a crane that's on a rail system here as well. And uh, they can move at least back and forth, but I assume, yep, left and right as well. And they're lowering this uh, custom turret into position here in the deck of the ship. So, um, yeah, great stuff. I really, really love to see all the engineers up to something on this scene. So there we go, guys. Th first place for Shadow Trace. <laughs> there we are. Any more thoughts on this one, Marek? 
Uh, well, it's beautiful, and uh, I'm just kind of like making mental notes, uh, you know, to use them in <laughs> yeah. future yeah. space engineering. But it like, you know, yeah, for inspiration and like yeah. when you're brainstorming and stuff, for sure, yeah. Because this, for example, like it really tells a story, right? You know, like there is this, this, uh, how to call it, like some factory, you know, for, for mm -hmm. making shipyard. Ship, shipyard. And yeah. then there is this ship, looks like some kind of submarine or like something really unusual, like very unusual. And the engineers are finishing it or repairing it. And maybe it's going to war. And uh, like who knows what? And, and where is it actually located? You know, like in the solar system or some other it's solar on a planet? system. Is, is it an asteroid? You know, where is it? Is it, in, is it a part of a bigger space station? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Are these the, these the good guys or the bad guys? <laughs> or is that yeah. subjective, maybe? NPC yeah. war confirmed. Yeah, great really great so congratulations shadow yeah. and um yeah this is as you guys can see we've had some fantastic entries it's it's been this is this is the this is the kind of stuff that uh we enjoy most is seeing the you know the work that the team makes going into being able to create stuff like this so our final static category which what i mean by that is like we have also a bonus category we here have the heavy industry modded category. So these are kind of just general uh, shots that are using assets from uh, uh, heavy industry and maybe sh showing this kind of war production vibe. You know, the, the war is coming, um, but these can also include mods uh, of some sort. So in that case, we have, what do we have? Now, this in individual is also already won today in one of the positions. Um, third, uh, third position here of the in heavy industry modded, we have Roni Dude with this very movie cinematic uh, type vibe here, which I believe is a, I think this is a modded planet potentially as well. That's why the scene's in. The ships that we saw earlier in his uh, other submission actually can be seen here in the distance heading to war. So, oh, let me just hide me in America again. I forget to do that. Yeah, let me, there we go. Very nice. I like the color scheme, basically. Mm. And I like that the, the, the three ships in the distance, basically, we just see the, the so silhouette. The, yeah, and the, yeah. And, uh, but it's enough to, to tell a story and maybe this you know is a, on a dune planet maybe not so that's part of the story <laughs> and, uh, people are saying dune have you seen the new movie Marek? yes yes yeah yes. yeah people are saying dune spoiler <laughs> yeah yeah and this is yeah fantastic i mean just going back if you're wondering guys uh basically people could submit um only one for each category but they could they could enter into every category so some people entered five screenshots or you know and you can potentially win in every screenshot in every category if you know if that was the case so there was there was only a limit to each one per category you know what i mean so second win for roni dude very well done roni this very cinematic shot here mm -hmm. in second place also we've heard their name before we have shadow trace with this awesome image here we have um a gas giant in the background oh no i mean not actually no, sorry not a gas giant but it's, it's a ringed planet in the background so shadow place there with the second place win in this heavy industry modded category and i will have to zoom in but i'll let you guys take in the vibe for a second but i thought Marit, for me i get a, i get a really movie vibe like the sun coming over the horizon there's kind of like this uh this uh, depth of field blur there's a is that i think he's he's either modded the sun or he's modded it in photoshop which was allowed by the way the manipulation of photos was allowed um there's a there's, a, there's kind of like this um lens flare but i don't know if it's a modded lens flare or added later but let me actually zoom in to some of the scenes here so we can kind of see this uh this outpost on this planet some of its 
kind of hidden by the blur here. There's patrol craft. There's a landed kind of colonist shuttle, let's say, over there. Ship leaving, maybe headed towards the planet in the sky above. Stuff getting unloaded in a crane. Yeah, the corners are, are blurred, are blurred out here, but it kind of gives this, which kind of makes you focus on the center of the image. Um, you know what's going on over here, but um, just just a really nice framing and it's really nice. I also like the color scheme on this. It's not, yeah, it's, it's kind of it's got a certain style to it, hasn't it, Marek? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, not not too many colors, basically, and also matching colors. Yeah, beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Sapphire, we still have some teasers regarding Warfare coming, so uh, stay tuned. In just a little bit, we're going to get through this. Uh, we're almost finished with the results here, and then we're going to be talking about Warfare in just a little second. So, in first place, for heavy modded, heavy industry modded, we have Chero with this... Uh, Another scene, kind of a factory hangar workshop scene with engineers at work um, building this tank here. And the tank actually has some modded uh, weaponry, which I assume is the main reason it was entered into the, uh, the modded category here. But it's again, it's a very uh, high resolution image here. And we can see engineers kind of, I like the easy animations as well, kind of, kind of cooling them down. Got the, uh, the turret here being lowered crane system got the kind of concrete feel engineers accessing materials and welding the undercarriage there we go so there's the uh there's a uh, chero with the the winner of the modded category so congratulations chero and Lovely. yeah it, it, once again Mark, it's following a scheme like you, you kind of have the white and the the blue um the kind of space engineers blue uh, mm -hmm. in there as well, which is which is nice to see. Yeah, and just a few colors, you know, yellow, blue, and, and white, or some kind of gray, and uh, that's enough. And I think, basically, it helps to communicate the geometry of yeah. what we see. Like, if there was more colors, I think the geometry will be kind of confusing, but here, it's, it's very easy to understand what is the geometry. And Joel, what is your guess uh, of, like, what kind of uh, vehicle are they building? Well, I think that I think they're building a battle tank. They, you know, you've got like uh, the, the wheels aren't there yet, or the tank treads uh, aren't there yet, but they've they've got this big turret, mm -hmm. double barreled up here. And as someone noticed that there's a nice use of the actually it's actually quite it's, it's a heavy battle tank I'd say because you've actually got um, AI you know uh, remote turrets on the four corners as well as the the main manual firing turret here so there's pretty heavily armored and uh lots of weapons now that's a lot of damage right there so interesting so ladders ladders on the sides of it here to, to kind of create this interesting uh fenced um i say ablative but what, what do they call the armor kind of like uh helping to diffuse uh an explosion to the side i think Mammoth tank. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Mammoth tank. What was the game? I think it was Command and Conquer, right? Wait, uh, hold on a minute. Wait a second. Because I didn't click, but someone's saying it's the, it's, the, it's the hover tank from Battlefield 2142. But I also saw somebody say... Hold on a minute. Now you're making me think. Now you're making me, making me think here. Wait... Uh, slat armor, slat armor, spaced armor, side skirts. So I, th I believe this is actually. I didn't click when I was when I saw this, but I believe this is uh, this is from a game actually, or he's closely inspired by. So there we go. So big congrats to uh, to, to Chero there, and finally, we are going to kind of. Oh, Marek's hidden. There we go. Finally, we're going to. We have the GIF slash video category. So I'm going to prepare this. And basically with this, is this going to work? Yeah, this is good. Third place is here. Uh, this was short videos or animated GIFs because sometimes 
you know, you need emotion to really get it across. I mean, honestly, all these scenes, like some of these factories would look great, I think, with everything moving. But um, we also gave an opportunity for people to submit videos or GIFs. So in third place of the GIF slash video competition, we have Galactic Gaming here. Let's have a look. That is correct. Yeah, that's good. Hold on, I'm going to hide ourselves. Let's do this properly. Here we go. So here we have a short clip of this uh, this factory scene, and there's uh, welding arms coming down. You have a hazard uh, skin there. There's an engineer walking in the background. Lots of lights going on. So there's a. Yeah, I love to see scenes like this when you know you see uh, a lot a lot going on. So congratulations here to Galactic Gaming for third position of the the GIF video. Uh, side of it. Contest. It's cool to see the. It's, I'm sure, Marek, you like to see the uh, you know the, the mechanisms and stuff working here, right? It's so beautiful. It's so good. Making use of Mom, Mom OS probably. Yeah, it's a good chance it will be Mom OS. So that was uh, third place. In second place, now this is a longer video, I believe, with music. Now, let's just, fingers crossed, this isn't going to be, uh, <laughs> I think it should be fine. So let's actually pause this, and we'll play this on stream now, guys. So listen in. This is uh, uh, in uh, second place. We have uh, Dakin, Dakin, and the video is called Rise of the Machines. So let's have a little look here. Uh, oh, it's not going to play yet. That's good. There we go. I'll just mute this in here. Now. We can bring, bring us in here as well. So there's Rise of the Machines. So again, we see this really cool uh, uh, factory scene and these mechs getting... Uh... Marek, you mentioned, was this, this might have been one of the things you saw recently because you were looking through this. Do you, do you remember if this was one of them? So uh, give me a few seconds because uh, my, my uh, video is lagging. Or oh, okay. Like a couple of seconds. It's it's weird because on my end it's it's it should be fine. It's, I I don't see any drop frames. So, guys on YouTube, are we okay on YouTube? Yeah, I think many people are also uh, complaining that it's it's buffering or, or loading. Wait a second. Okay. I see it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember this one. I I feel like it, I feel like it might have just been Twitch because YouTube I didn't see any comments about it so it's I think it's YouTube's YouTube's fine just Twitch was having some problems there interesting so welcome back Twitch I think we should be back now if you guys have five just some weird thing on Twitch servers I guess so yeah this uh, kind of factory of rise of the machines and we've been talking a bit today about machines building machines and here we go from uh, from Dakin congratulations to your second place entry. It's uh, a very uh, cinematic here. <laughs> it's it's great. I love uh, this is the this is the coolest shot here, seeing them kind of go through this holographic welding uh, area. Fantastic. And Joel, have you noticed uh, some kind of like pyramid uh, structures in the background when the robots are walking? Wait, uh, have a look again. Uh, we lost the stream, right? Or just Twitch, just yeah. Twitch. I don't know why. It's very strange. Oh no, now it's back. Oh, I, I don't know. Be back. Oh no. <laughs> it's hundred percent not on my end because I, we're sending our stream to restream, uh, and I would normally see drop frames and yeah. So yeah, there we go. Sorry, Mar I, I was supposed to be looking at the. I, did, I missed it. I need to look at it again. Yeah, uh, there was some pyramid. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah. I see them in the distance. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it like by design or it's some kind of like funny LOD? But that would be strange. I honestly I don't know. I, I, I can't. What do you guys think? Because I only see a small preview here. Do you, do you guys think that the pyramids are, are intentionally built? 
Oh, guys are saying, some people in chat are saying it's a bug, apparently. So maybe an LOD bug. This is a super flat planet, so there could be something there. Interesting. Voxel glitches. Maybe, yeah. Vox is not loading correctly. But it kind of, it, it kind of makes it, if you saw it as like a, a mysterious pyramid in the background, it could, <laughs> it could be a, some kind of more mysterious vibe to it if you ignore the fact it could be a bug. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, there we go. Congratulations to, to Dakin with the second place. And finally, our winner. <laughs> our winner, yes. They've only gone and won another category. Congratulations to Shadow Trace with this. I've got to make it smaller here, I think. It's a GIF here. And it's that same scene we had before, but it's in motion now. And there's mm -hmm. so much going on. The welding, there's the uh, people walking around. So there we go. Man, this guy's good. <laughs> I mean, actually, this was... I, I, I made it clear that the voting was done in like an anonymous way. So I renamed all of the entries and gave all the entries uh, uh, letters or numbers and then basically people just uh, the guys they they picked their favorite they didn't pick by name they picked by number if you see what i mean so it was also it's also a point that we kind of had that there yeah yeah this is really beautiful and i'm really proud that i helped to create these creations you know just little you know by starting space engineers and and the people did the rest you know, like the the players who yeah. made these creations, but it's interesting and but they are really really beautiful. Like we should realize them in uh, in real world, you know, and and build them in real world. I think that should be our aspiration. <laughs> yeah, Joe. man. Yeah, build or build this in the real world. Yes, yes, yes. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Go to, I'm waiting for this to happen. <laughs> or, you don't need to be waiting. You can start working on it. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Start, start, start building. Wait, sorry. You talking about real world? Wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I got to like, start building spaceships. Is that what you're saying? I got to become the next. Got to become the next uh, Elon. Yeah, like Joel Musk or something. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I do hope I go. I get to go to some kind of space in my lifetime, but we'll see. <laughs> Um, so yeah, massive congratulations to Shadow. Shadow, of course, actually getting two first positions in categories and, a, and a, another second place. So GG uh, to Shadow. And that is that is the results of the War Production Screenshot Competition. So yeah, big, big round of applause to the winners and everyone who submitted. There really was some great uh, entries and it was, it was pretty tough in, in some points, even when it came to doing the ordering. So... Uh, 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 GG's all round. Zusk. <laughs> Maybe try F5ing Twitch, because some people are saying Twitch is working, some people say it's not working. So try F5ing on Twitch, or watch on YouTube if Twitch is causing you problems. So. Uh, Joel, have you ever asked uh, how much time people spend on these designs? You know, like, from, from the beginning until it's done? Like, you know, like, for example, this one, uh, do you think it's a work for, let's say, 10 hours? Uh, and uh, and like considering that you would not reuse your previous creations or you would like really make everything from scratch or is it you know like 100 hours what do you think it's actually it's it's a really good uh question actually because um i think some people it takes longer for some people um some people are just you have like builders some great builders and some are like also rapid fire builders and some like like are more taking their time and stuff so i think it depends on the person I mean, maybe shadow can tell us shadow how long did it take you to build that I, I know do we have any other winners in chat i know people are tagging shadow trace in the in the twitch chat here i'm not sure i'm trying to see but i mean blip saying they worked on their shit for four months 24 7 production Let's see if we can get a, a, an estimate here for how long they were working on this one. My turtle design has been in the months for five months, uh, already been in the works for five months. Wow. Spets has five years of unfinished products, product projects. We're close now. We're getting close to the teasers. <laughs> I know some of you guys 
Yeah, waiting. We're just gonna uh, let me see her. I'm just messaging. Okay. Uh, I guess shadows. Yeah, we'll see. Two to nine. Oh, talking of hours, I, I just married. You know, we were doing a, we were, uh, we were kind of uh, playing something the other day. Can't talk about it too much, but we were playing something. Oh, you were there as well. On, you know, we were in, in a call, and we were testing something. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't realize until after, but during that, I passed my six thousand hours in Space Engineers during that that test we were doing. So, six k onwards cool. to ten k. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Joel. <laughs> Six thousand hours, and then this is where this is the part where I ask the chat: How many hours do you guys out there have in Space Engineers? <laughs> Dear God, I know. Some would say it's too much time. Some would say it's not enough time. It's it's uh. Okay, yeah. 3,000. We've got a whole mix here, but a lot of people, most people are over a 1,000, you know, which is it's incredible. I still would love to do, I don't know. Hmm. Let's see here. 600 since beta, 1.8. Wow. Some committed. Okay, so as for that... All I can say, Marek, for the, you asked about the, how long it take. The, that gift scene at the end there and the Shadow Trace's hangar, Shadow Trace says years of evolution, but about a month for that and reuse of old work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they probably had some older assets. They probably brought it in. Like, and I mean, the years of evolution, part of that is years of evolution developing the building skills to build like that. Because you, mm -hmm. you can't just like, I don't know, you can't just like, it's, it's quite hard as a new player to just get the game and build something like that because it's, hold on one second. Yes. I'm getting a... <laughs> Had a cat attack. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's quite hard. I just said Sparky, I just passed 6,000 hours. <laughs> Great, so uh, that's awesome guys. So much, so much, uh, commitment and dedication put into this game it's awesome to see and we have one more thing to show before the teaser um i just gotta see here i have one more thing to sort out i'll just get the hold on Yeah, sorry, someone just wanted a, he was, he does that when he's like at the door and he's just like, just demanding a couple moments in the camera. He's like, where's my camera time? There you go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, one more thing to show before we get on to the warfare stuff. And a lot of you guys are really like, really wants to hear about this, but this is also pretty cool. So some of you may have seen it on Twitter, but starting tomorrow, you guys will be able to join the campaign to uh, to purchase a Space Engineers plushie. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so this is something that we've been uh, kind of working with for a while now. And some people have asked for it over the years. And uh, we finally got a, a cuddly Space Engineers. Uh, we actually had a giveaway for this just end today, I think. But uh, the campaign for this will be uh, going live tomorrow on Makeshift. So you guys uh, just, uh, Kianata, are we going to post this? Actually, hold on. Let me get Kianata in here a second. Wait a second. Uh, how do I do this? <laughs> I'm going to, one second, Marek. I'm going to, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> just swap. Okay. How you doing? How you doing, Aaron? 
Uh, hey, hey, I'm good. I'm good. You're gonna show us this toy. Yeah, I, we, yeah, I, it's it is not a toy. This is a high quality, ultra adorable no. plushie. This is your new friend. Let's, let's get a close up here on the camera. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yeah, these these are super fantastic, insanely soft, and I love them. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So I, I can't wait to get mine. On my desk. I can't wait to get mine as well. Like I know lots of members of the team are, are excited to get this. So yeah, I know he, Aaron's been waiting in the wings here to 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 show. He's got the toy. Not many people have it. He's one of the first people in the world to get himself a, a cuddly space engineers. <laughs> In, in about five hours, we will be dropping uh, links to uh, the campaign for these plushies. Uh, so yeah, about five hours, we'll be dropping links to it and they will go up absolutely everywhere. Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Steam, <laughs> YouTube, it, it'll be everywhere. You'll no, find I'm it. just laughing at some of the memes in chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, so keep an eye out, guys. This will be going live everywhere, and you'll be all the inf you won't be you'll be able to find this easily. And once you when you get your uh, your plushie, please do send us pictures. We'd love to see, uh, yeah, love to see you guys uh, with your plushies when you get this. So yeah, more details coming very soon. Thank you so much, Aaron, for uh, for coming on here and uh, showing yeah. us the the plushie there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yep. That was a quick a quick that was an unexpected quick switch to switch in. Switching Kinata. So, uh, Marek, have you actually seen this uh, this toy yet? Oh, uh, not. In person, not in I mean. Life. Yeah. Not in real life. And uh, yeah, but I'm looking forward to to you know like have them in Orangeria. Definitely. I mean, it'd be cool if we just get like a whole not a room full of them, but like you know like many of them and just like. Oh, it'd be cool if actually we ha get many of them and just put them in different like places around the office just like watching like just like on a shelf here and like on a balcony here or something like this <laughs> keeping up on patrol people are already asking about them Mary. people are asking does it come in could it come in blue when can we get a red ship plushie yeah. um <laughs> i think erin should answer these questions later right yeah i mean that's yeah i mean for now the um the plan is to uh there's only a red for now red is basically the plan for now and yeah we'll see how you guys react to it if this if this red plushie is something that you guys have been you know wanting your entire lives and you know this goes really well then for sure we can definitely look at um expanding it to more colors or maybe even skins so yeah for now it's a classic red um limited edition here but we will uh, definitely see how the feedback and see how everyone reacts to this promotion and then uh yeah and get think towards the future yeah yeah i think they, they look really cute <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's it's really nice really nice stuff we, there were some iterations on it but it's uh i would I, i'm looking i'll take a picture of it with django for sure <laughs> needs the irl grinder i will love green blue yeah, which color do you guys want you can just spam for a second if you had to pick one color i see mostly blues because obviously red v blues a classic but i saw some greens in there as well Badger skin plushie, yes, Marek. I'm, I'm sure you can get behind that on Marek. A, 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 a honey badger space engineer's plushie. Or maybe you can just make a honey badger uh, plushie. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. The colors are coming in. Orange, green, blue. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, actually. I think this, this, this needs a poll, I think. Actually, that is a great idea. If, if we do, if it does come to expanding the, you know, the color lineup, we could actually do a community poll to, you know, to find the, the top five colors or the top five skins or something like that. Because that makes sense, right? What colors do you guys want? What is the majority want, right? Camouflage. <laughs> Camouflage. Oh, no. <laughs> Cow skin, skeleton, visor up. <laughs> Veteran two. Leopard. Nice. So yeah, really excited for you guys uh, to be able to get hold of these. So stay tuned. Yeah, a bit of a bonus there tonight. And now we get on to the final topic of today. And actually, um, this, I should have known there would have been a lot to cover today. But um, next up, it's time to talk, Marek, about warfare. There's been people in the chat. They've been waiting for this moment. All stream. Teaser when. 
So, uh, how should I do this first? Should I show the first teaser and then we just go into it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe I'll give a little bit of, of um, yes, the cat, a little bit of uh, kind of backstory here. And that this update, guys, is going to be massive. And we really want it to be the best it can be. So some of you may be thinking, it's, you know, it's been a, been a little while since the last update slash DLC. But we kind of want to say that we're taking our time of it. And there's a lot of uh, new mechanics, weapons. So there's a lot of things that we want to get right. So I just really want to stress that we want this to be as epic as it needs to be. I think we can uh, reimagine combat is, is the main thing here. So uh, I'm not sure if, if you want to add anything to that, Marek, but I think uh, that's the, the key thing here, isn't it? Yes, yes. So it's, uh, this update is going to be different and there will be a lot of mechanical changes on combat. And that's why, you know, like internally we are calling it reimagined re combat. And I am happy, uh, you know, with the direction that it's uh, in development or that it's being developed. And we decided to spend more time on this, you know, to make it really proper, uh, because this should be like quite significant update on how you do warfare in Space Engineers. So, uh, what about some teasers? Yeah, so I'll get at the first teaser. So without saying anything what this is, I'll just let the teaser play out and you, I'll let you guys react to it. And then I think it kind of speaks and then we'll kind of go over it and explain it here. So the first teaser for the upcoming Warfare update. Here we go. Okay, so there it is. And I'm gonna bring us in. I'll let that play out in the background for a bit. So this is the first teaser and this is really showing you guys that there will be new combat mechanics. And of course you're looking at target locking and also lead reticles here. So you'll be able to finally uh, have a much easier time knowing where to shoot. You know, it will detect the velocity of the other ship. And you can see in this video, even shooting rockets, which has traditionally been quite hard to land on a, on a moving target, it becomes so much more easy with this this system here. And I'd love to point out also this is work in progress and the art is not final. The guys still want to work on the visuals of this mechanic. So please, there's a big banner across this. Work in progress, work in progress. We really wanted to show you guys that there actually are new combat mechanics coming. And I think this already... Uh, you know, I, I can say that I've actually, you know, played around with this a bit and it's super satisfying. It's such a, such a big improvement uh, to be able to, you know, lock on and know where to shoot, right? Um, so yeah, what are, what are your feelings on this, Marek? This it's feature? Good. Yeah, like, I, I like it. And uh, it will make combat more manageable, I would say. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, great. I'm just reading some of the comments here. <laughs> some people say it looks good as it is. I mean, I, I just know that I was I was told the guys that they, they it's, it's still work in progress and they still want to uh, improve the art on it. But it's um, yeah, you're able to you know you have to part of it like you know you have to, you can't lock instantly. For example, there's a there's a time where you have to uh, you have to like wait to lock and depending on how far there's there's loads of factors and I'm not going to go into all of it now because we'll kind of keep that for a little later when we're you know, further, further along and feel more confident, confident about everything. But um, like I say, we'll be doing testing internally, testing with closed groups to make sure that this is balanced as well. There are so many parts of this update that are in the works to make sure that it's really going to be epic and balanced and fun everywhere, right? Um, just checking, yeah, that's good. Great, so that is the first teaser. Um, I'm not sure, Marek, if you want to talk about maybe one of the other things we're going to show here but there was a maybe talking about the weapon uh, the range and stuff right there was a point i think we were going to talk about today 
So uh, we also want to talk about one specific weapon, right? No, not the weapon. We were going to talk about the projectile, uh, the projectile, uh, the projectile range. I think. Did okay. You... Yeah. Yeah. So, so there will be a large increase in the in the range for the weapons. Yeah. So obviously now most vanilla well, uh, vanilla weapons are limited to eight hundred meters. So uh, range of weapons will be uh, getting a boost. Uh, again, can't say exactly how much that will be, but a significant boost which will also change, of course, warfare in Space Engineers. Yeah, <laughs> the weapon. <laughs> yeah. I would say two or three times. Two or three times? Okay. There you go. I mean, that's, that's, that's quite a big difference in terms of term, in, in engagement. Um, but that's, uh, everything is still, you know, work in progress, experimentation. So still, yeah. Let's see. I'm seeing here. So... I will take this off a second, and shall I, shall I go on to the next teaser already? Do you think, Marek? The uh, yes. okay. So the the uh, the plan today, as well as to kind of talk about the general update and on that we want we really want to make this the best thing ever. It's also that is this right? Yeah. It's also that it's not just. We don't want it to be just about fighting. We want there to be something for everyone, uh, always in every update. And I think that's true. Like even in the the other warfare, even in like Warfare One, there was these um, half windows, and there was. I mean, I've, I've, I've lost track of all the new blocks we've had. But the point is, there's always been something for people who are interested in combat. Because I know lots of people want new combat, but there's also people who don't. They're more interested in the industry and the building and so on. Um, so just to kind of show that. Here is one of the upcoming blocks. I reveal to you guys the bridge windows. These are the bridge window blocks. And uh, this is just one view of them here. And uh, they come in a number of varieties. And basically it has the desk as the half block. And then the, the rest of it there is uh, this kind of diagonal window. So that's kind of a, a brief description here. So bridge windows, and I think this bridge window set, it's not going to be, obviously, for warships and anyone who's planning to fight with a new combat, it will be beneficial. But any ships, mining ships, cargo ships, this is a kind of block that will be, um, you know, useful for uh, all other players as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Let me just... Yeah. Noise. Noise. Yeah, that's a, that's a noise right here. <laughs> Someone said, that's exactly what I need for my carrier, says someone in chat. Says uh, Rebel. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, new blocks too. So it's not just new mechanics. That's what we're saying. Like, that's why this update's big. It's going to be, you know, new mechanics, new blocks, uh, combat blocks, non-combat blocks. <laughs> I'm trying to say, I hope I haven't said too much already, Merrick. But <laughs> and uh, also, I also want to talk, before we do the last teaser... And Marek can back me up here. Another thing is there's going to be a lot of bug fixes as well. Like, um, I can't exactly say the number yet, but we're talking, we could be talking record numbers of bug fixes. Um, there's going to be, you know, th this is the this is one of the key things that um, I know some people are happy almost with the game as it is. They just want some particular bugs they're dealing with fixed and so on. So um, this is part of the fact that we're not just putting out new content. It's also improving the game and trying to make it yeah as stable as possible so plenty of bug fixes are coming as well and um yeah, i think that's good right Mark? i'm not sure if you have anything to add there man uh well i i actually prepared top three picks okay oh even he's more organized look at that boom <laughs> so, so like uh one of the topics that we covered is uh like solving damage problems or where you have some blocks and some of them are more prone to you know like damage or not, or some some of the blocks didn't have like properly balanced, you know, damage constants. So uh, this is fixed, or this will be fixed in the next update. And uh, another kind of like a bug fixed topic was bullets going through voxels. So that is fixed. And last one is the, the like the limit on the point lights uh, that you can have in a scene, and uh, which like if you kind of like 
go through this threshold or go through this limit, you know, the scene will start, the lights will start flickering. And so, so this is also fixed. Not only that the, the flickering is fixed and it will not flicker in uh, like no matter how many lights you have, but also these point lights, point light limits are like massively uh, increased now. Yeah, this was actually something that was relatively recent. Like it was something that I, you know, I, I, I'd be brought up and, um, yeah, like so often you're in a big, you know, in a big corridor or in like a big shipyard, and you get like this flickering because it's reached the limit. So again, like the uh, the guys took a look at this, and it's going to be so much better now. Did you say there won't be any flicker? I think, I think there is still some kind of point light limit, but it's it's a lot more, like at least ten times more. Maybe I don't know exactly, but I think in in general, even when it reaches the limit, it shouldn't flicker. It should be more like not yeah. as brutal on the eyes. It should be like fading or something. Yeah, so there are two things. One is the like fixed flickering, so it shouldn't flicker like no matter what the limit is. Yeah. The second thing is that the limits were increased from 256, which was kind of like hard coded in the game for yeah. some time, and up to 4,000 and something uh, when you are on the high quality. And if you are on a lower quality uh, video options, you know it will be obviously the limit will be lower. I don't know precisely how much, but it will be lower than yeah. those and but it still shouldn't flicker so uh yeah yeah so flickering is no longer that's so a feature <laughs> <That's so> not... <laughs> no longer a feature that's good and, and there was was it was there one more mark that you had i think let me check well that's it uh the damage yeah, problems I'm... bullets going through voxels fixed mm -hmm. and uh lights you know the limit and the flickering uh fixed so this, this is just yeah this is just three of some of the really exciting ones, the, the things that I know that lots of players, I mean, the, the flickering lights is, I haven't on a, not on a daily basis, but it's, if in some bigger scenes, it's, it's quite common. So yes, yeah, so this is also just trying to get across the fact that we really are trying to work to improve the existing stuff in the game as well. And there'll be more bugs fixed like this in the, in the final release. So definitely that to look forward to as well there. Okay, I'm now thinking if the chat is ready for the big one, Marek, you know the one. You know the teaser. You mean the weapon? Yeah, the weapon. Okay, so you, you can tease it. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, uh, hold on one second before I do this. Just check him if. Checking with uh, control here. Checking Keanu or something. That's building tension as well. Not intentionally. I, I'm le I'm legit asking Keanu or something before I show this. Okay. I've got it. So. Oh, he's typing. He's typing. Keanu is typing. Hmm. He's not typing. All right, I think we're good. Okay, so I give to you guys the first weapon reveal of the upcoming Warfare release. The, lo the large grid railgun. And there it is. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, there it is, guys. It's a big one. It's a big one. Okay, so people are happy. That's yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, people are happy, all right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what size that block is. I mean, it looks like it's at least, uh, it's like two blocks high and then like one block yeah. wide and maybe one, I think seven blocks, eight blocks long, I don't know. And I can also tell you that even I'm surprised of the shape of this um, rail gun and not in a bad way, you know, that uh, I don't think it's a bronc or something like this, but when I saw it in concepts for the first time, I was like, what is this? <laughs> and I read the title and uh, so I was surprised, but I actually liked it, you know, because I like when, <sighs> Some things are like uniquely different, you know, so like not everything needs to be 
in like like everything else so yeah like yeah everybody would expect so like i i think like a game like space engineers needs to be unique in as many ways as possible on the other side like we are not like in some ways uh, some other directions actually wanted to have kind of like very uniform names you know that's why we have like doors you know or like cockpit or yeah <laughs> and we didn't, didn't call it like like i don't know you executor know, some... 1000 or something exactly yeah, yeah. Like, like this because i wanted to be like much easier to understand basically yeah. you know you see it in the list and you know what it is uh but i still think that space engineers has certain kind of like visual aesthetics and uh and so this new railgun i think is one of those like exceptions that something that i personally wouldn't expect this kind of visuals maybe we can uh talk with the concept artist and uh, the 3d artists and the designers game designers uh you know like why they pick this particular shape and what kind of like real scientific reasoning is behind that you know like yeah. is it based on some design of some real real gun there's always concept there's always concept there's always stuff that uh you know is insp inspires uh things right so i it, it'd be a good question i'm sure that you know upon uh release of this update i'm sure natik will also give a pretty interesting insight to the design of you know the blocks as he always does so um yeah the love the reaction guys fantastic reaction in the chat that's great and uh yeah, the, already asking for a video of it firing marrick <laughs> you have to wait a little bit longer for that i think guys but <laughs> Well, um, definitely. That's that's. We'll keep that in mind, though, for a for a future future preview at least. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it looks magnificent there. Like just seeing the engineer so small next to it, and it, I think it, it does fit nicely with the, especially the, at least the ship. It's I don't know what ship it's on exactly, but it does it does fit in there nicely. Actually, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna slap one thousand on my ship and use it to travel. Point point one C. <laughs> so. That was the main idea, guys, today. Like to give you a bit of an update on the on the the status of, status of warfare, to show you a new mechanic that it's not just blocks; it's also mechanics. To show you that it's not just going to be stuff for shooting and war. Actually, there's also going to be things for builders and construction and uh, industry. And of course, yes, there will be some new guns as well. So that's the uh, the kind of key things with these three teasers that we chose. So. Fantastic. So, um, <laughs> I'm so happy I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'm going to cry as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's happening. It's happening. Uh, so, Marek, is there anything else that um, that you kind of like to say about War for Now? I think we've, we've, we've kind of covered quite a bit here today. Or do you think uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good wrap there? Yeah, yeah. I think we... We actually spent uh, twice as much time as we <laughs> spent, but I like it. I'm actually actually happy, you know, because we had nice time. Yeah. We discussed really interesting things, and uh, yeah, and we covered many things. Actually, after this stream, I am much more prouder about space engineers than I was, you know, like two hours before. Or hey, there you go. Before. There you go. You see, you see the hype in the chat. You see the the you know, you see everyone getting really. Uh, yeah, it's 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 great. It's great. Even yeah. I'm more hyped up now, you know, because I knew about this stuff for you know for a little bit of time now. But seeing the reaction, seeing everyone, you know, also feeling really great about this, it's yeah, it's it really encourages, I think, the yeah. team as well to keep pushing not, on. Not just hyped, but also prouder, you know, because the, you know, like the the stuff really looks good, and also the stories that are happening, you know, while people are building this, or when people are playing this uh, this you know, scenarios and uh, or the stories that we can tell, you know, when we are watching this, uh, these videos or these pictures. So, yeah, I think there is much more in Space Engineers than what we already revealed, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Like so much more to do in the future. We got to we, I say like both in the it's uh, like both in the, uh, you know, short term, but even in the long term going into uh, next year. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, actually mainly in the long term, 
when speaking about space engineers, but also the short term is looking good. Like for example, next year, I want to focus together with the designers and with the rest of the team on making the game, you know, like reviewing the survival aspects and basically kind of like balancing the game. So I don't want to talk like in too much detail right now, but in some way uh, to look, to kind of like close, you know, the this whole idea package. That package yes that space engineers is a good kind of like universal tool for doing like whatever you want and uh, but we also can kind of like close some of the loose ends and make it more uh polished and more uh in like uh also accessible to people so that's the short term and the long term is really big changes and and I'm also like very happy to be working with our team on those things. And and we are quite lucky that like these days we we have really good team working on space engineers. That it's it's actually enjoyable, you know, that the ideas people are coming and the way we are structuring the documents, for example. And I don't know, like it's it's really a pleasure to be working on space engineers now. Yeah. And it's it's I mean it's, it's it has I mean it's going back to eight years now you know it's been it's there's been it's been such a journey i think for the community for the game and for the team as well and, and for yourself of course marik you know being behind all this it's um it's been definitely i'm lucky enough to have, have witnessed nearly all of it and i obviously before 2013 i was at 2013 i was a player and I didn't, when i joined the company in 2015 but it's been it's been really awesome to see to see the journey to, to see this and I'd like to thank you, um, you guys out there, or everyone in the community, because you make this uh, this project for us, this game, you know, that we all have so much passion for. Uh, you you kind of com you you complete that. I gotta say, you complete that package, you know. <laughs> and really, thank you to you guys because. Without you know the the, the builders, the modders, uh, you know the the video creators, the streamers, um, the server admins. There's I mean there's probably more roles than that, but um, it really has been a joy, I think, being a part of this community now for eight years, and there's been great memories, and we uh, there's yeah plenty of uh, great things coming to that I I I believe will create more fantastic memories so thank you guys honestly it's um it's been awesome <laughs> yeah Th thank you uh, we really have very nice community and as joel said like you are part of the of this whole system or you know like space engineers universe and without the community it, it wouldn't be what it is you know so like we are all part of of this and uh because like myself i did just some you know, small part of space engineers, then the team did like the larger part and the community is doing like even much larger part of what we see everywhere. So, so that's fantastic. And uh, I'm looking not only to the next eight years, I would actually say like even next 30 years or something like this. I'm not sure what the end game for space engineers is, you know, like if there is some, if it can be kind of like finished at some point, or like finished in a sense that you cannot add any more piece, you know, or it wouldn't make sense to add any more, any more piece. Like, you know, when you are creating an art and it's art is done when you don't need to add any more piece. And so I don't know if a point like this exists for space engineers. Maybe that's something I should be thinking about. But uh, right now I see so many things that we need to do and and it's actually, as I said, like it's going very well. And uh, today's stream was good, not only because it was, you know, like the, the memories, uh, but also uh, reviewing uh, this uh, screenshot competition. Yeah. Uh, and seeing basically what the community is creating. So like on one side, we are creating the game and you are creating the stuff in the game, all these creations and uh, like together connected it works very well so uh i'm really really glad and also thank you joel for for doing this and and i'm glad that you joined keen 
couple of years ago, <laughs> like many years ago. Yeah, well, the the crazy thing for me is is that I I joined te- I joined Keen as a teenager, and now, <laughs> now I feel like it's uh, I feel like um, I feel like I've lived my whole life in space engineers in a way, you know. Yeah. In some way, it's it's like that. that most maybe... of my memorable life, actually, most of my mem my life that I remember is actually you know, mm-hmm. being McKean actually and playing space engineers, streaming, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's what a crazy time. <laughs> yeah. Man, keen a teenager. Yes, I was a teenager. That's good. <laughs> oh, <Keen>. please. <laughs> yeah, well, you gotta. Yeah, I'm already thinking about. I gotta think of like a pun for the ending, haven't I? Let me think of something. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been a. It's this this stream. You know, I, I was super hyped about the stream because of all the things that we were going to reveal today. But I think it's actually just been. This has probably been one of the. One of the best keen streams I've ever done, I think, Marek. Honestly, the vibe, the vibe right now is good vibe. I think just looking back on what we've done, what's happening now and what's going to happen, I think it's, it's, it feels really good right now. And yeah, um, yeah it's, 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 I just, again, thank you guys and thanks the team for making the project what it is because yeah. it's, it's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, some great comments. <laughs> and uh, we have, we are over time actually by quite a bit, but uh, this, this is what happens when we start getting nostalgic, you know. Um, and I've, I've spoken, Aaron's actually, uh, we, we kind of covered it here. We're, we actually kind of will uh, wrap it up here. Aaron's going to join us in the next live stream uh, next week, I think, um, because we've, we've covered so much already today. And uh, I think we've, address we haven't answered all the questions i mean there's a lot of questions about warfare for example and i think today is not the day for that um for sure as we start getting towards that release we'll start talking about it more and teasing some more but um yeah my big thanks to, to aaron and kian you know behind the scenes for helping out with the chat stuff as well and uh sending me stuff as well and coming on with a plushie so um yeah it's been great any, I mean, I guess any final time, uh, final time, final words, Marek here before we uh, kind of wrap the show up here tonight. Just thanks to everybody who is creating all these beautiful creations in Space Engineers because it's like for me that's the 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 reward, you know, that I'm getting from this. So thank you. Awesome, and um, yeah, I mean, just to kind of remind us that from today. Big congrats to the screenshot competition winners. We'll be in touch about the prizes for that. Um, we have the Halloween sale, so check out 30% off if you want to pick up Space Engineers um, and all the DLC for 30% off. And we also have, where's my mouse? Yeah, we also have the uh, the plush toy uh, promotion uh, uh, campaign starting uh, tomorrow i believe so i think eight it's, it's even like in six hours or something i'm not sure exactly and maybe if i'm not sure if kian art is, li- well, kian art is going to share it on social media later so there's that so that's the main announcements today and of course some nice warfare teasers that we hope you guys liked and uh, we'll be back with another stream uh, very soon i think next week on the, dev- the next devs lost in space stream we'll get maybe we'll get if he's uh, up for it we'll get kian art on and we'll do some more q a and just general q a stuff so Great. I'm just thinking. Uh, I was thinking here. Oh yeah, here we go. I got it. Thank you so much, guys. That's all for now. If you're interested in the full list of teasers and plush toys and stuff, definitely follow us on Twitter and uh, Discord and all the uh, socials. And as always. Now that we've reached eight years, I'm getting pretty close to crying tears. <laughs> that, that's that's it. That's it. <laughs> Good night, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs>